Hello, my name is David Burden and this is a short video to demonstrate our current work with automated avatars within Second Life. Our AI architecture is called Altair and it's a fairly distributed architecture with three main components. First of all, we control our avatar in Second Life using the normal lib Second Life uh, C Sharp library and .NET. Running on the same PC as Lib Second Life is a bot interface which converts Lib Second Life to our standard avatar sensing and avatar action markup languages. And then the first element of the Altair AI code, which both performs some of the equivalent of lower level brain functions in terms of navigation, movement and the like, and also some of the low road emotional processing. And finally, running on a web server and accessible through web services, we have the main chatbot engine and the rest of the artificial intelligence engine. And this can also access things like web services and dedicated modules to handle things like navigation and emotion. So this is Halo Rossini, our automated avatar. And we're going to start off just by showing some uh, basic chat functions, just asking Halo where she is. She picks up the uh, parcel she's on and tells us, uh, asking who am I? and uh, she reads my uh, avatar's name and says yes hello you are Karamozi at least that's what it says above your head um, now asking uh, who can you see and uh, she has a look to see which avatar she's got within her sensor range which is about uh, we set it to about 50 100 meters she can see Abby Carver myself Adam C Constantine and another avatar one of which is actually another uh, automated avatar with some work with the uh, University of Birmingham um, we're now going to ask her who wrote the Stone Diaries. One of the things we try increasingly to do is not store knowledge actually within the avatar itself. Um, instead, to answer a question like that, what we do is we make a call to the Amazon Web Service. Um, so fair enough, she realises that uh, the Stone Diaries was written by uh, Carol Shields. Um, and we can now ask her uh, if she's got a review of the Stone Diaries. So again, she can make use of the Amazon Web Service and bring back a review for the Stone Diaries. Bearing in mind, she gets all this information before she's even starts typing, so the information is coming very back, uh, coming back very quickly. Uh, then ask her what else is uh, like the Stone Diaries, and again, in this case, she can use the Amazon Listmania feature, so as to bring back books which are uh, related to that particular book. So yes, very variety of people, uh, things like uh, the Night Watch and uh, Fingersmith, other books like that. So. Next, we're going to ask her uh, what is a comet. Um, so to answer a question like this, obviously no good going to Amazon. So instead, she goes to Wikipedia and uh, brings the information back just by screen scraping uh, Wikipedia. And next, we're going to ask her what's on TV tonight. Uh, she's a UK chatbot, so of course she goes to the BBC website and uses the BBC's web service uh, so as to answer that particular question. Um, and then, of course, the issue is there's a lot of programs on TV tonight, so what she has to do is just select uh, two or three of those uh, to tell us about. Um, OK, what we're going to do now is ask her, uh, can you see a fountain? So again, she inspects her knowledge of the area um, and identifies uh, two fountains. Uh, there's one 45 metres away, there's another one about 25 metres away. And she gives us a rough direction rather than giving us an XYZ coordinate, uh, which is a slightly more human thing to do. This time we're going to ask her uh, where the closest seat is. Um, so again, she passes all the objects within range, finds one that's got seat uh, somewhere in its uh, title. And she says, yep, the closest uh, seat is about 10 metres away to the southeast. And I'll then ask her to uh, take me there. So this sort of functionality can be quite easy to use to, uh, by a, an avatar to actually uh, guide visitors around a particular sim, taking them from uh, each particular point of interest. So off she goes, off to the seat. Once she gets the seat, we tell her to sit down, and she sits down on the seat. The normal animation associated with the seat takes over. And while she's there, we're going to go ask her uh, a few more questions. This time we're going to ask her, is an ant uh, bigger than Rigel? Um, that's the sort of question that people often ask chatbots, uh, because it's the sort of thing that nobody would have bothered to program in. Um, but she answers it correctly. She says, no, an ant is not bigger than Rigel. Um, now, the way she does that, we can get an idea by asking, how big is an ant? And what we'll find is uh, she just thinks about how big an ant is. Um, and she says well, she doesn't know about ants, but she knows that ant is a type of insect, and she knows insects were about a millimetre to ten centimetres. So what we've actually got is a taxonomy built into her of different objects, and she knows roughly what size each of those objects are, so she can very quickly compare different objects based on what category they belong to. 
Okay, now we're moving out to the main uh, part of the garden. Um, and what we've done here is we just resed a snake um, in front of her. And she says, yuck, uh, get it away from me. Um, she's got an emotion alert database built in. Um, we're gradually populating with that with, ob with objects that she uh, likes or dislikes and needs a safe snake she doesn't like. So as we remove the snake, you see she claps and applauds because she's uh, glad to have lost the snake. And try and find a different sort of object this time. And this time, once it fully reses, you'll see it's a, a rabbit. She's clapped her hands. And then she says, I love rabbits. There's actually a difference in processing there. The clapping of the hands is an instinctive response that comes on a, a low emotional, ro a low processing road. And then the, the text response, I love rabbits, is actually coming back from the web server. You'll notice as we uh, now build up more and more rabbits, gradually her response gets more and more uh, graduated and eventually just saying whatever. Um, because you know she's bored of rabbits although again as the rabbit gets removed you'll notice that she sagged a bit she was sad to see the rabbit had disappeared okay resed another snake um, and uh, yep again similar sort of shock response being shown there um, she sees a snake and we're now going to ask her why she's a, why she why she is afraid and she should be able to tell us because she's actually put that into her working memory and she knows the thing that last made her afraid was that particular snake so what we can do this time is we're going to res uh, an object between her and us and she's initially not going to respond to it because she doesn't know what it's about. One of the things we really want to do is rather than programming snakes and rabbits into it is actually going to learn about the environment. So here we've we've re resed a, a minefield. You know, she hasn't responded to it. I've told her to come towards me. As I come towards me, uh, it explodes, uh, it causes damage within the second life system and she says, ow. Um, and she's now learnt that minefields cause damage, and so not to like them. So if I now res a minefield behind her, you'll see immediately again she shows a startled response. Uh, she doesn't like it. If I take it away, she claps, she applauds, she likes it. So that way she can learn now automatically anything in Second Life that actually causes damage to her. Um, she can learn to dislike that um, and to steer clear of it and to take the proper response. I'm now going to ask her to be inquisitive. Um, and what that means is basically that she's going to touch any new object that she sees. So what we're going to do is we're going to res a money box, put that on the ground. The minute I put it on the ground, she tries to touch it. It's programmed to give her 10 or $20. Um, and she comes up and says, yep, I tried to touch the money box. Thanks for it. And again, she's now programmed. She's now learned, if you like, the fact that it's something that gives her money. So she likes that. So if we get rid of it and if we then tell her to stop being inquisitive so she doesn't drain me of all my cash, then we should find next time we raise the money box she'll be quite happy because she knows money boxes can give her money so yes she applauds that she's quite happy about that and again if I take the money box away you should see she's sad, she's sad because we've taken away something that she likes okay just to prove that uh, she's an ordinary avatar she's not an object bring bring up her normal profile uh, if we ask her about her first life uh, there's a picture of her in first life uh, more truthful than most other pictures in Second Life. Um, we can also instant message her. Um, so here I'm going to just going to ask her how much money she's got. She can also invite and accept friendships. Uh, she can also request group um, membership, invite people into groups and the like. So just saying, how much money have you got through IM? And she responds through IM. She's got 173 Linden dollars. She makes a lot of money out of the testing that we do. But essentially, she can have the same conversation over IM as she does in normal text chat. Um, again, just to show some inventory functions, ask her to give me something. Um, she, yes, she's given me an object named Torch. What a surprise. And says, yep, there you are, Cora Mosley. And just check to see that's sort of in my inventory. And then I can actually give her an object back as well. And I'll give her a torch back. Just drop it on her as per any normal avatar. And again, you see there the little blue message coming up that she's accepted my inventory offer. And she says, thank you, Cora Mosley, for the torch. And uh, if I ask her to res something out of her inventory, I'm just going to ask her to res a soccer ball. And she res the soccer ball for me. So, that uh, is the end of this uh, short demonstration. Hopefully it gives you an idea of the sorts of functionality that we can uh, build into our avatars now within Second Life. And uh, we're continuing to add functionality all the time. Thank you for watching.